As aircraft began to fly at higher speeds, climbing out in an emergency became impossible. Through the close cooperation of the Martin Baker Company and the RAE, much work went into developing means of escape. This test rig was erected at Farnborough, and in those early days, Peter Howard, Commandant of the Institute of Aviation Medicine, served as his own guinea pig, participating in the first rocket seat ejection trials himself. One of the initial problems was applying enough force from underneath to ensure the ejection seat cleared the tail of the aircraft. Here are early wind tunnel trials conducted with models which illustrate this problem. And now the full scale. The removal of the cockpit hood is not always possible before being ejected. With a slow motion record, a picture by picture analysis will show clearances or damage that might occur during the ejection. As with many aspects of research and development, most advances in the design and technology of ejection seats were achieved through trial and error. In the early stages using a dummy man, then progressing on to live subjects. Extensive seat ejection trials were carried out from a Canberra aircraft. Special tracking mountings were designed to enable high-speed cine cameras fitted with lenses up to 18 inches focal length to be operated at a high angle of elevation. This ejection seems to be unsuccessful. Again, a picture-by-picture -picture analysis will bring to light when, where and why things started to go wrong. Seat ejection trials at a height of 40,000 feet have been successfully recorded from the ground with cameras fitted with 36 and 15 inch lenses. These pictures were taken at the lower altitude. Work goes on continually improving seat ejection apparatus. This experiment, testing low level operation, shows a dummy being ejected from a high speed sledge. pictures were taken at 150 frames per second and the shot at real speed which follows demonstrates the need for a high framing rate. 